Podcasting just got a lot easier with Zencaster's all-in-one podcasting and post-production suite. Get studio quality sound with loudness, noise, and hum reduction that will make your podcast sound like you had it recorded professionally in a studio rather than in your own living room. Zencaster is a podcaster's dream, and for the holidays, they've offered 30% off for the first three months. Just go to Zencaster.com slash Holly to get your offer. That's Z-E-N-C-A-S-T-R dot com and use promo code Holly for 30% off the first three months. Or check the link in the show description. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Today, I have a very exciting guest. I have one of the hardest working men in the adult industry today. I know I don't interview nearly enough male performers, so I'm very happy to bring you Quentin James today. Quentin, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Take a bow. Kiss a little. Thank you very much. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. So before we get into our conversation, um, I do want to give a shout out to my sponsor, Dipsy. They are short, sexy stories that you can access through their app. And it's a great way to kind of relax right before you go to bed. Or if you've got some special alone time, they cover all kinds of stories about um, you know non-binary, trans, uh, your straight up vanilla scenes, BDSM, anything that you're into, you can find it at Dipsy. And if you go to dipsystories.com slash Holly, you will get 30 day free trial. So go check them out. Dipsystories.com slash Holly for your 30 day free trial. So Quentin, hello. Yes. How are you? Hello, I'm great. So it's right before Thanksgiving, and I know you're on the East Coast with family, so I just want to say I really appreciate you making the time for me because I know you're technically on holiday right now, and I'm oh, of course. monopolizing I'm looking your time. Forward to this, looking forward to this actual five, six days off, which is like never happening, so it's great. You work got off the plane a this lot. Morning. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you work a lot. <clears throat> How many days a week do you work? Um, well, God, I was working 20, about 20... 20, 24 scenes a month, and it was too much. I had to slow down. That's way too much to work. Um, now I try and work no more than five a week. I like I like to do three to four scenes a week now, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. uh, to be honest. But, yeah, it's just – yeah, I can get you just get burnt out, and I was getting I, – I can't say no. I'm probably a lot of – the same with a lot of people. I can't say no. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm available. Oh, yeah, I'm available. But then I just end up working all the time, and I don't have time to do anything else. And the so. thing is, is, like, your job is – demanding in so many ways it's obviously like physically demanding but there's like a kind of like a mental demand as well i mean basically oh, you're having yeah. sex with other women for a living and we all know that the male appendage can be temperamental shall we say so <laughs> i think like when someone like you gets burned out it's a different story than like someone who works it gets burned out so like oh, yeah. when you're burned out do you find that like you start struggling in scenes um, a little bit, a little bit. I mean, a lot of it's, a lot of it's mental as well as physical. I mean, um, I think the mental strain from day to day is more than the physical strain because everyone has this, especially men have this, um, kind of vision that we're on set and we're having sex from 10 to five and we have to stay hard for like eight hours and, and then that's it. So I can understand if that's, if that's your vision of what happens and yeah, I'd be exhausted too if I had to stay hard for like eight hours and keep going and keep going. Which has sometimes happened on the odd occasion when you're like, "All right, go, stop, start. Here you go." But honestly, it's not really the um, the physical part; it's the mental part of the whole day because you just gotta. As soon as you get in there, you can have a laugh and a joke, but you're still there to do a job. You still better be on your script. Make sure you're on time. Make sure that they run smooth. Make sure that um, you're on top of it, and especially with sex and everything like that. So it's it's, it's very mentally demanding. That's why that when for me when I say burnt out, I more mean just mentally exhausted. And yes, my body gets exhausted as well. Like sometimes I, my, my weenus gets a little sore if I'm going back to back. And that just depends on the, uh, 
on the scene, sometimes a girl can be a little rougher than others. Sometimes it can be more demanding physically. Um, like I know with me, when there's a lot of lube involved, it really dries me out because I'm uncircumcised. So I've got to be mm. careful with that. Um, and sometimes I do have to take a, I barely ever, I barely ever canceled scenes. Like in, in four years, like I, can, I can't even count on one hand how many times I've canceled. So that's, that's pretty good. Cause I don't like to do that. I'll just make sure that, okay, um, I need to take a rest day, you know, both for mental mm. and both for physical. Um, mm. but yeah, it's the mental, mental, mental thing that I think is more draining when you get burnt out. Um, and it does happen, then your body is just going to be like, nah, I don't want to work today. And it's nothing to do with your physical thing. Your body's just like, I'm drained. Like, it's going to make it harder for you to get more aroused and get more into the scene. And I know when that's coming because my mind is just like, not that it doesn't want to be there. It's just like, all right, yeah, I'm coming towards the end. You know what I mean? And then it just becomes more of a struggle. Um, and the girl, it doesn't matter on the girl. The girl could be a tenor or two. It doesn't matter on them. Once your body is just like, all right. I'm a, I'm, your body and mind is just like okay. I need to, I need to take a break. I'm just not. It, it, things aren't. Uh, when your penis and mind aren't in sync, it, it can be a little bit difficult. You know, that's how I, that's how I say it. Because sometimes it's just. I mean, we all have bad days too. You know, like we all, we all have home life. We have life outside of porn. You know, like the other stresses. And if you bring that into the work environment, it, it has a toll on how your day goes. Really. So you just got to yeah. try and filter that out and go. That's what I do. I try and just filter everything out. And when I'm there, I focus on the day, the girl. I just try and have the best day I can, whether I'm feeling drained or not. Because um, it's just going to be better all around, you know? Yeah, there's like a mental aptitude that you guys have to have, which I feel like mm. is unlike any other job. Yeah. You know? No, I think I mean... <laughs> it's funny because, I mean... Us as men, I mean, as a society, like sex is a leading thing. We do everything for sex, really. Everything mm. for the opposite sex. People, especially if you're single, you'll go out, you'll drink, you'll go to clubs, you'll party, you'll do everything to try and get laid. Mm. And that's what my job is every single day. So that goal that people have at the end of their normal work day is like the goal that I'm going to work to do anyway. So someone finishes work, like I'm excited about tonight to go out. Hopefully I'll get laid, you know what I mean? After a full work day, so I have the energy. I'm going into work at late. So it's kind of defeating all that stuff. Uh, and it's great. But I mean, after as time goes on, I mean, it's like any job is going to get pretty, pretty repetitive. So yeah. you do lose a bit of excitement. Like the general, I mean, everyone's going to lose a bit of excitement. I mean, if an IT guy's been there for five years, he's not going to be like, crush some numbers today. Can't <laughs> wait. Let's go. Um, I mean, yeah, when I was first in, I was like, I'm going to get some Putan. Yeah. Now I'm like, I'm going to get some Putan. <laughs> <laughs> you know and it, like, yeah. like 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 when i when i'm there though like it's great it's just um yeah i mean it's it's i just become like i think anyone in the industry even girls it just becomes repetitive i mean it doesn't mean you can't have a great time it's just you know what you kind of know what you can expect now you know oh for sure yeah i mean i think we all get yeah. jaded like we're whatever oh, yeah, it is 100%. that we're doing you know so how did you get started in the adult industry <laughs> it was my wife's idea that's, I feel like that's well, not one I hear very often. So me and my wife have been together, God, what am I now? 30, almost 35, almost 12 years. So way before porn was even a thing in my mind or any kind of adult stuff was in, in my mind. So because we've been married so long and we got married so young, like she was, I was 23 actually and she was 22. And uh, we met when she was 21. We decided to, as years went down the line, to like try an open relationship. You know what I mean? Like, okay, let's, let's, we only live once. Let's try and um, explore other people and do that. So we did that for a while and um, <clears throat> it has its ups and downs as anything does. Um, and then we stopped and then she got pregnant. And then after she, after we had, after we had my son, our son, sorry, um, I decided, you know, I was like, I wanted to do like the open thing again. You know, it was, it was, I kind of missed it. I was like, I felt like I wasn't done and she wasn't ready. Um, and I kind of kept pushing it a little bit and she was like, we had some, some porn friends, um, Alexis Monroe, uh, who's not in the industry anymore. Was a, was a good friend. It ends up being a good friend of us and Leah's. Um, and she said, well, why don't you do porn? At least you can like scratch your itch and then get paid. I was like, I'm not doing porn. I'm not having myself out there like that. Anyway, planted the seed, didn't she? She planted that seed and then it just <laughs> kind of dispersed. I was like, porn, hmm, a porn star me no wait maybe you know those days where you look in the mirror you're like Haha, porn star nah but really maybe <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she'll i let that bury for about a good four five six months and then 
um, I was just like, are you serious about it? She's like, yeah, I mean, because she was in that thing of like, she was at least I won't get jealous of really of other women and like, it's a job and everyone knows where they're at and everything like that and everything else. Yeah. And I was like, all right, we've only lived once and I guess so. I applied to, uh, I applied to LA Direct and I applied to OC Modeling. LA Direct was like, screw this guy. I don't think he even looked at my email. And then Sandra got really? to me from OC. Well, I didn't, I didn't get a response because that's what was recommended to me. They were like, okay, LA Direct and OC are back then. I like, uh, 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 some of the top agencies, so reach out to them. So I did. Uh, I didn't know. I didn't know what I was doing. Okay, I was can, I ask, two agents. can I ask you a question? When you submitted yeah. your um, application, did you include photos? I did just regular photos. I didn't include any nudes yet. I just did okay, photos. Right. But you, okay. Cause to be fair, like I do get a lot of emails from guys being like, I want to be in the porn industry. Yeah. And sometimes they include photos and sometimes they don't. I ignore 99.999% oh, of yeah. them, especially the one. But if someone who looks like you sent me photos and was like, I want to be in the porn industry, I would get back to you. Well, <laughs> well, thank you. That's very nice. I think I name dropped though. I obviously name dropped Alexis Monroe because she was in there and LA Direct was her agent at that time. Uh, and I'd also, which I missed out, I'd also shot a scene before that as a tester. It was a, it was a, a website um, that wanted to do amateurs with pros. So amateur guys with pro women. Um, oh and I shot no a scene offense, with Nikki. but that would be my nightmare. Oh my God. Because, I, I, you I know, so you obviously have done very well, but like new t male talent is usually like oh. a struggle. Oh no, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, I mean, so it, 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 opportunity arose, and I it, it was like I'm going to be with Nikki Delano. So oh, uh, I was. That's also helpful. Nikki De, so Nikki Delano was my first ever on camera scene. God, I can't even remember what the website's called now. It's on there. What was the scene like? Because like? it was. It was, it was well, we did two. We did two scenes in that day. So wow. I did two scenes of her. Um, but no, she, she was great. She was really professional and really great. And she, it, it actually gave a really good, it, it gave me a really good um, experience for the porn industry. I was like, wow, she's super nice. She's like this blonde, small, busty, beautiful woman. And she's just so nice. You know what I mean? I was like, wow. Because people have this perception of people um, and it can make or break you really. Like if you have a first bad experience, you're going to be like, ah, oh, well, I don't want to do this. And everyone's going to be like that, you know? But I had a great experience and the scene went, the scene went well. I was nervous and I was like, okay, I know I've got to open up the camera. I've got to think about positions. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. Uh, and they just kind of, it was shot like really kind of artistic. It was like, um, had like music in the background and like, it was just shot like more like artsy sex. Um, uh -huh. But I remember like it went, it went, it went, it went well. Um, and I was like, oh, wow, that was really good. Okay, cool. God, I, I can deal with that. So, that is yeah, my so first funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's such an exception to the rule because I actually just did a whole like video about like how to get into porn for guys. Cause that's like the number one question that I get. And I always say, I'm like, if you think that you're going to start off in porn, your very first scene is going to be with one of the top female performers. That's not going to happen. You're going to do like some shitty blow bang where you're like with yeah. a bunch of other dudes because people want to like, see if you can make it. But you like totally that, yeah. had no, that first I, experience. I could, could, Cause I, obviously I didn't know who Nikki Delano was. So I wasn't like, Oh, she's this big name in the industry. I didn't, know right. that stigma in the industry it was just something that came like so a bit of a background of how that came like i've been have you ever seen there's a, there was a tv show called gigolos so for six yes, years i remember now, that a, for six years i've been with that company before it was porn so i am basically i mean let's go let's put it that male companion for my female so i've been doing that for six years for cowboys for angels before i got into porn so i already had some background on um couples and people in the room and not really performing under pressure, but kind of, I mean, like sometimes I get hired, like just to, just to, um, with, with couples, you know what I mean? And like, you have to be okay sometimes with the man watching, you know what I mean? Or being there, being present. It's a little weird, but the way I am, I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. I'm so nonchalant about anything. I didn't overthink it. I was like, oh, okay, let's work. Let's go. Um, so having other people in the room is what I think puts a lot of guys under pressure. Is like, okay, you got that person there, you got that person there, you got that person there, and you overthink everything. Um, so when it came to doing that scene, I think I was, because I knew kind of people there, I was like, all right, this is just another day. Um, and the, first, the, the initial thing is, because there wasn't any, like, photos or any, like, uh, sex stills or anything like that. I was like, all right, let's kiss and take off your pants and let's go. Um, and I was like, all right, it's working. It's working. All right, we're good. Let's go. <laughs> 
um yeah i know we did two oh. scenes i had to yeah so yeah yeah so it was just it was fun it was really fun i look back and it was really fun and i like i still speak to nikki now like i haven't shot another scene with her since then because i think she kind of retired like when only fans started coming out and as mm -hmm. i was coming in um but no we kept in contact for a long time um yeah she's, those she's fun those, those scenes are somewhere if i can find where that website is i'll, I'll let you know because it was it was it was it was fun it was good it was good yeah. young me without this tattoo you know what i mean it was a young innocent me kind of <laughs> that's that's such a funny story yeah you definitely had a um atypical first experience in porn i have to yeah. say yeah, um, I, I, yeah when i first got into industry there's always there's always a, there's always going to be a pressure for guys because when you come in you hear about like guys failing and this and that like oh how was your scene well we had to cancel the scene because the guy couldn't stay hard or uh, and that's the main thing. It's mainly the guy could stay hard as how to cancel the scene. If the guy can't come, there's always ways to do it. It's not really a total loss. Yeah. It's not ideal, but if the guy can't stay hard, I mean, that's it. And that's normally just pressures of, of the day. It's not really like, cause they're probably, I, I know how it is. Cause guys are like, well, I can get hard at home. I can do this. It's fine. I have, there's nothing wrong with my dick. But when you're under pressure like that, it's, it's like, if you're nervous and I've had it at times where I've had anxiety or I'm kind of nervous and oh, trust me, it, it will affect you if you don't get it under control. How do you, um, have you ever completely failed a scene? No, I've never completely failed a scene. That's right. Wow. I've never had to, uh, I was, I was on set actually a couple of weeks ago. And it's funny because I, I had COVID in 2020, July, 2020. And ever since then, my anxiety has been, I had like, well, the first few months, my anxiety was really bad. Maybe it's the, the pandemic and stuff, but it comes and goes yeah. even nearly two years later. And I was on set for Brazos and, uh, I was already having a bit of a, anxious day and i don't know why and i was like all right just just calm myself down and uh we started the scene and we did all the sex stills great everything started the scene i'm there going down on the girl and i went and i just had i just felt that anxiety panic attack come on and i'm there going i was like all right i said i said i said i'll be back in a minute i had to go outside sit down and just sit there and calm myself down i was like okay and it was funny because it's just like when you get like a panic attack it's almost like anxiety it's almost we, we know that things of being nervous and if you get overly nervous you can feel it in your chest but this yeah. was just out of nowhere it's like just an anxiety thing out of nowhere so i had to stop uh they took like a, a two or three minute break i was like all right give me five ten minutes i'll be right so i'm outside just taking deep breaths like getting my penis back working again and i was like all right so um five six minutes well, probably, yeah probably just less than 10 minutes later calm myself down got in there i was like all right don't know what happened, walked in. I was like, all right, I'm ready. They were like, Psh. they started the scene. I just went back in the scene, went straight back to where it was and carried on. And I finished wow. the scene. Because they kept yeah. going. Cause would, you have to, because because in situations like that, if you if you let your mind go like, oh my God, they're waiting on me, they're waiting on me. Okay, I can't feel this song. What happens if, if you let your mind go down all those things? It's very, very difficult to recover. Yeah. Um, no, so I was just like, all right, you have a little panic attack or anxiety attack. Oh, no, it's fine. Just take a breath. Take a thing, you know all these people, it's fine. They'll be carrying on with you, you know what I mean? It happens here or there, and then, yeah, it was fine. So, wow. yeah. Um, but in terms of failing, I mean, there have been days where I've been burnt out and, like, the scene's been a little bit more of a struggle, like maybe I've been up and down a little bit. But I know that's because of just uh, I've been burnt out. Or sometimes I've done, like, a full five, six days, and then I have to do a two-a-day, and by the second scene, I'm just like, I even say to the girl, I said, look, I might need some help today. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. And normally I know the girl, um so but yeah your body's just telling you like all right yeah we need to we need to have a little break mm -hmm. so, so what kind of what what type of scenes do you do the most frequently like gonzo oh, features you know um probably probably gonzo really i mean the, your, your typical uh here's a bit of a here's some dialogue and then go and have sex you know what i mean mm -hmm. um I do love Gonzo. I do love working for my favorite company to work for is Belissa. I love working for Belissa, Belissa Films, because I just like I like to shoot Gonzo. I like to just I'm more of a passionate performer than like your typical hardcore pull your hair, fish hook you kind of spit in your face. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, which I can do. You know what I mean? Um, but I like just to have the connection and just let the camera go and if because uh, I'm aware where the camera is and where the light is. So if I need to open up, I can, and I kind of know where they are. But I think those scenes just feel more natural. You know, I like when mm. the scene feels more natural. And I think with today's age, that's especially with OnlyFans, that's what a lot of fans are looking for. They want to be like, oh, they just want to see like what happens. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. not only how I shoot my OnlyFans too. They're like, oh, what storyline? What do you want? I was like, let's just put a camera up and see what happens. Because 
I like it like that. And even if there's some funny bits or some edits or all like that, I think it's great. People like to to have that and be like, oh, it, it is real. Okay, they actually are having real sex. And then you know, depending on the site, sometimes you got to cut each position depending on how what the site wants and everything like that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I just I'm a lover, not a fighter. You know. <laughs> so you have a background in performing arts. I do. Um, does that help you with like the? I know you you know shot a lot of features as well, and yeah, you sing and dance too. So have you been able to incorporate um, any of that into any of the films you've done? Um. I think having a, per, a background in performing definitely takes the edge off when it comes to uh, like lines and acting and being in front of the camera. Uh, because I know a lot of people, like a lot of people, especially women, don't get stressed out about sex because, I mean, honestly, they don't really have anything to stress about with the sex. It's the dialogue that a lot of people get really up in arms about. It's dialogue. Um, I only mainly know it from a female perspective because unless I'm doing a boy, boy, girl, which is, yeah, which is, few and far between compared to a boy girl i mean but when everyone's on their lines the day's easier and there's been times where yeah, the guy messed up his line the girl messed up their lines i mean i've messed up my lines and it can take the day from being a five six hour day to a 10 hour day depending on how frustrated you are so i think definitely the performance side has, has made that like a lot easier because i've had a, more, a lot of experience in that already um mm -hmm. i just kind of really had to learn the sex part uh, but yes um I have, a, have a, I've incorporated some singing into into the, into uh, this industry. Me and Lacey Lennon did something for Brazzers called Step Away, and uh, it was this uh, little musical parody porn. And um, uh, I guess the people at Mind Geek wrote the song, and then I had to go to LA and go into the studio and record the song. Um, and then we just kind of made a, a, a musical music porn video with it. I remember that. It was so clever. And Lacey's like got the most incredible voice. She's a trained oh, opera she's great. singer. Yeah, she's it's great. Like she's great. unbelievable her voice. And it was so funny I how that came out. It was so it was, good. It was, it was funny how that came about because I was uh, shooting some of the promo stuff for, for Brazzers. So I have to do scenes. And you know, sometimes they have ad scenes, you know what I mean? So you have to do like oh, yeah. uh, a minute here, a minute there, you know what I mean? A different segment. So I was doing an ad scene and I guess some of the people from the office from MindGeek was, was there on set and they had a piano. So I'm just saying between things, just playing piano and singing, you know what I mean? And Because sometimes it relaxes me. I like to play if it's there. Sometimes I can just get in my own zone and just forget about things and just think, especially if we're on a break and, and we're not rolling and they're not doing stuff or they're just doing photos. So they heard that and they were like, oh, my God, you sing. Oh, we have a Lacey Lennon in the industry that sings too. We should do it. We should put a scene together with you guys. I'd like some singing. I was like, oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Thinking, ah, yeah, okay, we'll see it when it happens. And then, yeah, a few months later, like, oh, we, we want to do this scene. So, and then they did it and it was great. I mean, it, it was, it was a fun time. I got a lot of great feedback on it. I know, it, yeah. I know within the first couple of weeks, it hit like a million views on YouTube and then YouTube's like, no, taking it down. Yeah. Cause it's porn, but it's not. Yeah. Well, they, well, they did say, they, they, they did say for work, you know what I mean? So but yeah, it didn't matter I because know. it comes from just... porn source. Um, so it was a well, pair. I remember that, like I said, it was a parody about step. Oh, yeah. Porn, which as we all know is very prolific in this industry how do you feel about the whole because i'm sure that you've done a lot of stepfather stepbrother oh yeah like, i get how do you it. feel about it honestly i don't care honestly it doesn't bother me at all some people are really like oh i can't do this i can't do that um it was dude, what threw me off i had to work for a company and they couldn't say step they couldn't say this you had to call it swap swap mom swap son swap daughter swap dad yeah. So that to me, getting that in the in the thing, I was like, I guess it's all legalities now with with the credit card companies and what you can and can't do yeah. and everything like that. So, but that to me was more weird than saying my stepdaughter or stepfather. Most things you have to just initiate it, uh, like, oh, uh, well, I married your mother, and you know what I mean, just to get it across, and then you don't have to say it anymore. Yeah. When I've had to shoot it from Mind Geek, we have to establish that the marriage between the parents is a new one yeah. and that the stepmother or father was not around when the other um, performer was a minor. So it is something yeah. along the lines of like, you know, I'm 18 years old. You can't tell me what to do. You know, you only married my dad three weeks ago. So who do you think you are? Like, we yeah. have to kind of say that to establish that, like, it's not incestuous in any way where there was it's like a minor. And then after, and then after that, up. if they want to yeah. say, if they want to say daddy or mommy or daughter, you can, because it's already been established that it's not yeah. actually, 
ancestral. Um, I've done, God, I, one of the weirder ones with me was um, foster porn. Yeah, you know, my foster daughter. So it's like we adopt this daughter and she's bad. And then basically um, you're, you're bad. So uh, there was, it, what was the scenario? We adopted her. She was being a brat. And the wife is like, I'm going to sort this out. And then they tied her up on the table. Like, I think it was a Thanksgiving thing. And then I had to stuff the turkey, which was her to teach her a lesson. I was like, ah, all right. Okay. It's fine. Uh, it's, but there's just something. Yeah. Oh, no, you know. We get asked to do some strange things in this industry. Oh, yeah. I think, I think I've done some where it's literally, oh, it doesn't matter if it's incest or not. And I'm like, well, that's on your, that's on your company then. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because it's always like I'm, I'm seasoned enough now to know, like, okay, even if we're ad lib in the dialogue, that they always we say, all right, we've got to get across that we aren't incest in any way. And you just have right. to throw it in there. So, right. I mean, it honestly doesn't bother me. Some people don't do it, but I don't care. I, I, it doesn't yeah. bother me at all. Yeah. I, I, I play the dad a lot, to be honest. Yeah, I play the dad a lot, especially if I'm doing Hustler or Naughty America. I play the dad a lot if I'm not playing like the uh, the the husband or the something else. But yeah, I play the dad a lot. I get a lot of these young young ones, these young new ones. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we are going to take a quick break, and then we're going to come back. We're going to talk about what it's like to be married in this industry and so much more. So hang tight. We'll be right back. Zencaster makes remote podcasting easy. Zencaster records crystal clear audio and ultra high quality HD video, and it's easy to use even for my guests who aren't that tech savvy. To make it even easier, Zencaster is built right into your browser so you don't have to download or install anything. There are a ton more recording perks, and Zencaster is constantly updating their features to make sure that they are the one-stop podcasting platform. For the holidays, if you go to Zencaster.com slash Holly, you will get 30% off your first three months. That's Z-E-N-C-A-S-T-R dot com and use promo code Holly for 30% off the first three months. Or check the show description for the direct link. All right, guys, we are back. So you've mentioned um, a couple of times that you are married. So mm -hmm. how does that work for you guys where you're a performer and she's not? Because I know a lot of people cannot imagine being in a relationship where one of them has sex with other people for money. Um, honestly, I just had its ups and downs, you know, even though it was her idea to get me in the industry. Um, I've made mistakes. She's made mistakes, just like normal life. I think what would make us stand out more than the rest is because we've had a history before porn. It's not like it started out as a porn relationship, you know what I mean? Where she met me when I was in the industry and then all of a sudden she's like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. And then had to adapt quickly. I mean, she did have to adapt, but because we already had kind of an open relationship anyway, and we've already been with other people and known about us being with other people, I think that kind of helped with some of the, the, the jealousy or some of the, um, insecurities uh and i trust me like when i started this industry back in 2018 i mean i was like a kid at christmas you know what i mean i was like oh my god yeah i get to do this get to do that i think i think all guys have that first year of excitement you know what i mean and it was right around when kind of content was becoming a thing um i didn't really know how to explain content so she was like wait you get to have sex with a girl with just your phone and no one else there i'm like yeah she's like but like, and then she was just worried that, okay, yeah. it's going to be more intimate. There can be more connections. Like it, 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 it's work, but then it becomes more like you kind of just having sex. And at the time I was like, no, it's just in my mind. I'm like, no, it's just work. Yeah. I mean, if you, a lot of people shoot content now as kind of, even if they're in a relationship as a loophole, just because they want to sleep with that person. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, which is fine. And I told her that she was like, well, do you, do you just want to have sex with this girl? In my mind, I'm like, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing I'm like, well, I'm like, it's a loophole. We're going to film it though. And we're going to sell it. Uh, so that took a while to get used to that took a lot of compromise and stuff. You know what I mean? I had to, even though in my mind, I'm like, it is what it is. I had to kind of compromise to her to make her feel more comfortable. And I'm stubborn. So I was like my stubborn self about it. And then she's stubborn too. So we went back and forth on a, on a lot of that stuff. Um, Cause I just didn't know how to, how to really explain content when I was in there. I didn't really know how to explain it in a way that um, could make it more comfortable, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but other than that, like we got through it, we came to a compromise and then as time went on and she, and she 
saw that things weren't really changing. Our, and I think that's the biggest thing. Things weren't changing in our relationship, you know, like, because that's the dynamic. If things change and I become more distant or I become more this or I express interest in, in others, it's going to change the dynamic of the relationship, which is going to change, make people get jealous and insecure because that's what shouldn't happen. Like this should be, you should go on set, do your thing. You can have the best time ever. You can have the most amazing sex, but then you come home and it's like, okay, you're back at home then. You're back at home now. Mm -hmm. That's what I found works. I mean, yeah, we talk about it. She'd be like, how was your day? I was like, yeah, it was, it was a good day. She'd be like, oh, who you shoot with? I was like, oh, I'll show with this person. And I keep it very surface. Uh, unless she asks me questions, I don't. Be, I want. I won't be like, oh my god. And I normally tell like the funny things or the bloopers that happened in the day, and I'm like, oh, you never guess what happened today, like this and that. So I keep it lighthearted, and then I just make sure that um, over like this. I mean, this has been a process, and I've learned this that I make sure that she's always knows that she's always loved. You know, that like no matter what, I've come home because it is. I, I I now. I mean, after some time, I see it. I have to see it from the other side. I'm like, okay, you don't do this for a living. You're definitely not having sex as much as I am. Um, I have to show you that this is just work and, and that you are my main priority, you know? Um, yeah. as I said, like, cause when I'm on set, like I want to, I want to, I still want to be myself and I want to have fun. Like I, when I'm on set, I kind of forget about everything at home. And then when I'm off set, I just forget about everything that's been on set, you know? Um, so, but as I said, she's, I mean, I'm very open. Like I believe, I believe that I can't be a hypocrite. So we only live once. So if I'm doing this and I'm having sexual things, all the time even if it is for work i'm like go explore like if she wants to go explore and have some sexual fun that's fine um i try to mainly say do it when i'm at work or i'm out of town uh, so it doesn't so it doesn't like disrupt our relationship but I, i'm always like yeah go go have that feeling because I, I think it's important for the other person to feel just the attention not necessarily the sex but just the attention because even on set we're still getting attention you know what i mean it's still that attention of of, of two people like vibing for the first or a couple times and I think that's what a lot of performers like out of it is just like, oh, it's, it's nice. I get some attention if I've been in a relationship for a long time because it's just a different kind of attention, you know? Mm -hmm. And we, we as a society thrive on that. I think more than the actual sex, we thrive on attention. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. So, um, but, yeah. You mentioned, like, just kind of briefly in passing, like, you'll tell her about, you know, some of the funny things that happen on set. Do you have any, like, great on set stories that you can so, share with us? She'd be like, uh, how was your day? I was like, oh, it was a shitty day, meaning I got pooped on. <laughs> <laughs> now, how do you manage that when, when that happens? Because I, you know, I've heard uh, I mean, feedback from people saying, like, I couldn't do anal because I'd be so mortified if, if poop and, and that's I'm just like, shit happens, you know? Li literally. And that's what it is. The girl is far more traumatized than the guy. Uh, and sometimes it's just a little bit. Sometimes there's been like a whole big old doogie on there. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, all right. And yeah, is it off-putting a little bit? Yeah, I mean, the 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 detail but like the look and then the smell and you're like all right okay is it a boner killer yeah a little bit sometimes yeah but you just find the job you gotta you gotta carry on like i'll i'll like it doesn't bother me i'm not i'm not grossed out and even if i am i'm not going to show it like it's not i mean this is what it is i mean you're going in you're going in the back door you know what i mean you better better be risky and these girls yeah. especially take a lot of time to prep so they want to make sure that they're super super clean so if they're if they're not i can understand how frustrating it is mm -hmm. um but yeah, it's only happened a, a couple of times, you know. I mean, it it is what it is. I mean, it's just this is a funny story that I, I like to say, and she'll be like, "Ew, that's gross." <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it is funny because I mean, me and Leah's done anal in in our personal life a good handful of times, and she doesn't prep. She's just like, All right, "Go in there," you know. And it's always been fine. And she's, so I guess I guess I guess I'm lucky. But I mean, it yeah. depends on different people's bodies. I mean, some people can clean out too much, you know. Um, mm. But what else has been funny on set? Um, oh God, I, I so I broke my I broke my finger on set. Broke my finger. I was running outside, slipped, and I hit my hand. Um, I still finished the scene, and then the day later, I went. I fractured my finger, fractured my hand and finger in two places. Uh, Kieran set. Yeah, that wasn't Kieran set. That was. I think that I had you booked the next day. And I um, think you had to cancel on me because of it, yeah, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, so that's what it was, because I was in LA, because I had to, um, I had to, yeah, I was running for a scene, and then I fell, and then I was like, got through it, and I was like, I have to get this checked out, because if this is broken, I can't, if I have to have my hand wrapped, it's not going to look good. Um, but yeah, so I broke my hand. So I was in a splint, so I had to take about, I took, I took about less, just under a week off, just to keep the splint on, and then I took it off, and I was like, you know what, it's fine. 
And then another time in my first couple months in the industry, I was doing POV and I got a battery pack that fell out the camera and hit me on the nose and busted my nose open. And I have a scar on my nose. I was POV. Let's just, uh, who was it? It was, uh, God, I can't remember who it was. Crawling towards me like this. And I'm in POV then. Dink. Battery right there. Full on boner in my hand. And then my nose is just bleeding. So I was like, run to the bathroom. I'm like, all right. So wipe myself off. Uh, and luckily it was POV because I probably would have to cancel because they can't shoot me with a big gash on my nose. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, got, I was like, it's fine, it's fine. Because that's what I'm, me, I'm like, it's fine, it's fine. We're fine. We're not canceling. We, I'm here. We're, we're doing this. And then yeah, finished that scene too. And I was like, oh my God, I just had a Band-Aid on my nose. Bless him. The cameraman felt so bad. Even, even to this day, he feels bad. And I was like, remember when uh, you fucked on my face? He's like, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Uh, yeah that's uh that's a big yikes that's a big problem um oh, yeah. i mean uh, you i'm trying uh, one more i got one more oh so yeah, yeah no. please I, I was i was doing a boy girl 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 and um there was what was it one was kind of uh one was kind of riding me the other one was on my face and the other one was like licking my butthole on my balls but my legs were in a weird position and then she's bouncing on me. And I was like, listen, guys, I was like, you're blowing air in and you're pushing air out. I said, my stomach's getting full. And I said, I need to fart. And they was they, they, they were laughing. They were like, I was like, no, seriously, it's just going to be air. But I was like, all right, we'll carry on. Anyway, it must something happen. But she went and somebody pushed my legs. and I just <laughs> so loud <laughs> into the girl that's like in my butthole. And then I was like, and everyone like in her laughing. face, I was like, did her hair in, fly in her, back like in, Beyonce? In her face. It, it was like a. <laughs> oh, it's like one of those like Marilyn Monroe has the uh, has the wind blowing up her skirt. Imagine yeah. that. Um, so, but then, yeah, so everyone laughed and it was funny. And I was, but then I had to take a break for ten minutes. So I had so much air in my stomach, I had to go and squeeze in a ball to get it all out. So, oh. <laughs> but yeah, I warned them. I was like, I could feel. It. I was like, Yo, I'm gonna like you either have to stop or carry on. They were like, Oh, it's fine. Yeah, just. And I just let. I was like, All right, fine. I'm just gonna let it happen then. And it did. <laughs> You know, someone's got a fetish for that. You could probably sell just that specific clip to somebody for a lot of money. Oh, fart porn. I know. I've heard it. It's crazy. Yeah. It's like some fart porn. (laughs) You know, it is so funny. So I used to box and there was this trainer at my boxing gym who, and like everybody knew I did porn. Yeah. And he came up to me once and he was like, hey, he's like, yo, he's like, so you work in the porn industry? I'm like, yeah. He's like, yeah. He's like, you know, he's like, I'm really into fart porn. And I was like, Oh, okay. It's like, do you like shoot any fart porn? I'm like, no, it's not really my thing. He's like, yeah. It's like, but I like like the dry farts, you know, not like the wet farts. And I was like, okay. And he was like, yeah, yeah, fart porn. And I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> it was just so weird, you know. And, and I don't know if you get this too, but like sometimes when people know that you work in the adult industry, they think that they can just tell you all of like their deepest, darkest fantasies because like you oh know you'll God. understand, and you're just like, I don't really need to hear about this i couldn't even imagine could you imagine he, he's there just jerking off being like oh yeah a dry one and the wet one comes he's like no no i'm done i'm done now i can't i can't listen to it it's, one's gone from a to a and you're like he's like oh, too much the- too, I, 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 draw that. I was on the edge i almost came and you spoiled it with your wet <laughs> i couldn't even imagine oh my god that's brilliant Oh, oh God, that's brilliant. Jesus. So you uh, you once said in a previous interview that um, everyone's got a weird cum thing. Um, what did you mean by that, and what's yours? A weird cum thing? Yes. Like, like cum face or cum fetish? I don't cum? know. A weird cum know. thing. God, I say them some random shit when I get interviewed, so I don't <laughs> remember. But if I said some weird... God, in context of a weird cum thing... Uh, maybe a cum face because I've seen maybe. some of the guys when um, we do boy boy girl and like we're both there to finish together and like I like to think I don't really have a like like what I call the poop cum face you know what I mean when you're like yeah. um, but some people I've seen like I look up and I'm like oh Jesus it's just, just yeah. a weird cum face like well, and especially um, if you're shooting softcore, you know, because a lot of times, like, we can't show the cum shot. So a lot yeah. of times they zoom up to the guy's face to kind of, like, show yeah. that he's coming and the guy, like, fakes it. Yeah. So. I, I, I like yeah. to think, I've I watched some of those, and I think I have a very genetic, like, oh, yeah, I'm coming. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh. 
but when people some people are actually coming like just the face to get there is like <sighs> and I could I, I, I couldn't even imagine like imagine if you're with a girl and you're like oh yeah baby I'm gonna come and she's like yeah come and he's like okay <laughs> I can't even do it but I mean you'd be, you'd be like, okay 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 don't come don't come don't come don't come it's fine yeah it's fine, it's fine. I'm good don't <laughs> so maybe that was it, a weird cum thing. I mean, I think I know I've talked about like different cum phases. Uh, yeah. So because yeah, it's just very interesting yeah, to me. It it's like no, and people are gonna be like, "Why are you looking at the guy while he's coming?" I'm like, I don't know, I'm trying to time it. You know what I mean? And then I look at his face. I'm like, All right, maybe I'll not. Maybe I'll just look at his penis instead. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I know that like um, sometimes guys will, if like they feel like they're gonna come too fast, they'll look at like another guy on set to like help them bring them back in the moment or, you know, not, not come that quickly. Do you ever do that? Do you ever like distract yourself by like looking at something that like oh, no, doesn't I, turn you on? I, I had a guy look at me and he, he came in an instant. So no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I don't, I wouldn't say I look at the other guy. I do mess around with like sometimes the, uh, the crew. So like if they're in a tight shot, um, I'll look at them or like sometimes like if they're tight shot, like, oh, I'm going to come and I'll look them directly in the eyes as I'm coming. <laughs> So just, just weird stuff like that for me. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't, I just, I just, honestly, I sing a song. I'll, I'll take my mind off or I'll count things on the wall. Oh, there's been times where I'm just like, it gets too much. And I push the girl off. I'm like, Nope. They're like, what's wrong? I was like, Ooh, you nearly made me come. This thing going to be over before it is because I'm old and I don't know if I got another one in me. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I just, I, I just find different distractions, you know, but, um, no, I've never really looked at the other guy. I mean, I mean, if they're making those faces, maybe I should look at them and be like, all right, this is, this is definitely off-putting. So, <laughs> <laughs> What what do you do if you show up to, scene, to a set and you're not attracted to your scene partner? Either because like physically they're not attractive to you or maybe like mentally, maybe they have like a shitty attitude. Uh, like how do you handle I that? Would, I would much rather them be less physically attracted but have a great attitude than be so attractive and have a shitty attitude, 100%. Mm -hmm. Cause I can get around everything else. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, it comes down to attitude really. I mean, yeah, you are always going to be physically sometimes not attracted to the person, but if they're not attractive and they have a shitty attitude, then you're going to be like, Oh crap, two for two, you know, you know, mm -hmm. um, you just have to, I mean, you just have to get in the zone and do it. And sometimes you just have to focus on things that turn you on or try and kind of dominate the scene to, to the way that you can kind of, um, turn yourself on, you know? Luckily, I've not, I mean, it's very rare that that's happened, touch wood. Like, and normally it's just an attitude thing. Like, if the girl's just, yeah, like, she acts like she doesn't want to be there, that's the hardest thing, you know? Because mm -hmm. um, then you've got to kind of, like, try and win them over. And I, I don't, I'm not there to win anyone over, you know? I just want mm -hmm. to come in and, like, have some great chemistry. And, like, I'm always bubbly on set. I'm always fun. I'm always, like trying to make sure that we have a, have a, have a good day. Like I'm trying to, I, I want the girl to like me because it's easier for me. You know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. and that's, again, comes down to the attention. You know what I mean? So if like, I feel like I get a bit of attention, I feel like she's involved. It's going to help me as a performer. And I think it's going to help a lot of guys as well. If they get that little bit of attention, not that they need like, okay, um, get me hard or anything like that. It's nothing like about the physical thing. It's just like, if you act like you want to be there and you're kind of excited to do the scene, that's all. That's all I need, really. I don't. I couldn't really. It doesn't really matter if you're a two or a ten, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that makes sense. Take us through like what a typical day is on set. Like when you show up, like all the steps that happen on like a typical porn day set. Okay, so uh, nine ten a.m. Girl will be there for makeup. Um, I'll probably get there around eleven or eleven thirty by the time the girls done makeup hair pretty girls um and then we'll know and go. what are for those who like don't know industry jargon, okay what are pretty girls? so so pretty girls are all the the still photos that you see when you scroll through the website all the high definition photos of her in her in her bra and panties and then stripping basically stripping down from there you know she'll have a nice set of lingerie with heels and then she'll do a lot of poses all the way down to fully nude and um the company will promote those that only takes about god and that can, that can take anywhere between 30 minutes and an hour, depending on a lot of it's set up too. Cause once they've done makeup, if they're not set up for photos, they've got to set up for photos. So normally I, I say from hair and makeup to pretty girls, I, I normally say about two hours, two and a half hours. Uh, and normally I, I'm 
if I work for a company a lot, I'll just get the director's number. And especially if I'm local, I'll like, just text me when you're in Pretty Girls and I'll be on my way or text me when you're halfway through Pretty Girls. Because um, mm-hmm. sometimes I get there, especially in Vegas, and I'm like, you're not even out of makeup yet. <laughs> yeah. Why am yeah. I here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? So, but this, because there's always times where it's like, okay, call time is 12. And like, oh, I can uh, actually come at one. I actually come at 1.30. Because they're just running behind. I mean, it happens. So, yeah, I do that all I, the time. I always have the male talent. I'm like, text me because I'm saying one, but like, we may not need you till four. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly. And I appreciate that because I'd rather be, then I can get other stuff done, you know? Yeah. Um, but once I get onto set, normally nowadays, God, if, if the shoot goes good four hours from when I get there and get out, depending on the mm-hmm. script. I mean, it's just, if it's a feature, it's a little different. There's a lot of dialogue, it's a little different. If there's a lot of dialogue, it's going to take longer. But it's not much dialogue, I mean. God, I was on a, I, I think quickest I've been in and out. And this was anal for, for Mind Geek for us. And I was, I got there at 11. <laughs> Luna Star was like, she comes in, she's like, okay, okay. I need to be at the DMV at 2.30. And so this is 11 a.m. when I got there. And I was like, all right. She was like, she was like, they were like, yeah, she failed to mention this. I love her, bless her. She was like, so we got to get this going. Boom, popped at 1.50. She's like, yes, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so I was there, I was there less than three hours. So it was great. That was, I think that was wow. that an anal scene too. She was just, I mean, she's great. She's always, she's always on it. Luna Star is like, uh, I actually shot her in like a really high production scene for yeah. browsers with Mick Blue and somehow it didn't get communicated to her that it was an anal scene. Um, oh, shit. and we get to set and she was like, Oh, it's an anal scene. And she was like, no problem. She was like, all right. I just like, give me some dildos. Like give me an enema. Like what? And she was like, good to go. The Bro, scene went perfect. No problems. Like easy. Yeah. Some people like that. I, I mean, we've had to, uh, I know some of the guys that like have like really, really big penises. Some of the girls can't take it in the vagina. And sometimes if they can, they'll switch it to anal because they can do it better in anal. And if even the girls request, can we just do anal? Cause it's going to be more comfortable. Yeah. Which in the beginning, which in the beginning. Yeah. Work like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was like, so, Oh wow. So speaking of, um, you know, another misconception that people have is that in order to be a porn star, you have to have like this absolutely massive, massive penis. And you've described your penis as average for porn. What would you say is average for porn? Uh, I'm about, uh, my, my penis is about seven inches, seven to seven and a half, probably closer to seven. Everyone always like everyone, everyone to take their penis measurement as an inch. You know what I mean? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm a, I'm a solid seven inches with a curve. So I like to say that adds a bit of a bonus, you know what I mean? And I'm uncircumcised. So maybe it's really nine, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> if you uh, stretch the foreskin out. <laughs> if you stre- oh, if you stretch the foreskin, it's like 12. Come. I'd be like, watch out, Dread. I'm coming for you. <laughs> oh, damn, that guy, that guy's thinking about big penis. Unless you're Dread, Jesus Christ, I think he's got the biggest I'm so excited because I'm actually, he's coming on this podcast. I, I was, was going to be like, I'm so excited I get to fuck Dread. I was no, no. what you are going to say. <laughs> I have this baby now. I'm taking that monster arm. <laughs> no, 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 definitely not. I, I you know, could you know, never you know, take dread. You know, it's fun. You know, it's funny. And I hate to give this guy props because I love him. I hate him. My, my good friend, Kieran Lee, he said, um, he did make a comment in the pandemic and he was like, um, he was like, Jesus, the only per- person that's going to be walking, uh, working is dread. Cause we've got to stay six feet apart. He's the only one that can reach. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> yeah. So that was funny. I was like, all right, hats off. It's funny. Yeah, I mean, me and Kieran go back and forth. But yeah, back to I, back to the uh, back to the penis thing. Um, no, you. I mean, if you have a big penis, and I, when I say big penis for porn, it's probably nine, ten inches, and you can perform, and you can make it work, and you don't fail, you will work a lot. You just will. There's 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 such a category for big tick, dick porn, and if you have it, like it doesn't matter even matter what you look like, because honestly, they would probably just film that big monster going in. You know what I mean? So I think nine, 10 inches is classed as, as a big dick. I think between six and eight is kind of average depending on, depending on your body, your, your girth, your length, because the camera, like, honestly, like between a seven and eight inch dick, depending on how the camera is, it's going to make it look bigger or smaller, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of the girls can't really tell. I mean, I get girls all the time being like, oh, you're like eight inches, right? I'm like, no, but thank you for adding one. <laughs> I, I say my penis is two two hands and a head. Two hands and a head is how big my penis is. Um, which honestly, which I've learned along the way is girls prefer it. Girls prefer it to prefer the dicks to be um, like not that huge. You know what I mean? Because they have to work with huge dicks all the time. Um, so they prefer to come in like to just. I mean, I mean, I guess I guess in the normal world, my penis is 
it will be, I guess, big, but in the porn world, because everything is already big, I class it as average, you know? So the average, I guess, average penis in the world is what, five, five and a half inches. So if I'm seven, so if I'm seven, I am above that. But I think in porn, the average penis is seven because it, yeah. that's what it is. I mean, you have to, you have to have something to work with in porn. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. But you don't have to have, it depends on what category you want to be. But it's, it comes to the same thing. If you've got a 12 inch penis and you can't, it doesn't work, you're not going to work. Um, but if you have a seven, eight inch penis and you're good with your lines, your acting, your, um, your work ethic and people like you, then you're going to get booked a lot. Yeah. So it's not and necessarily. I think, yeah. I think that's definitely the case with you. Mm -hmm. Um, so how has the stigma of being a porn star affected you? Like in your personal life, do you ever come across where you've been denied? I don't know. Uh, banking, credit card loans, um, anything like that? <laughs> I did. When I opened my LLC, I did say that I was in the adult industry. industry and they were like, okay. They came up like, yeah, we can't give you a business account. I was like, okay. So you can't say that you're in the adult industry if you want to get an LLC or an S-Corp or a business account. So I learned that one quickly. That was with Chase. Was that a bank that said that to you? That was Chase. So I oh, went okay. back. So first of all, Chase is the worst with that yeah. they they have shut down so many porn star accounts and yeah no you because banks are actually per, private institutions they can do whatever they yeah. want so you would never tell them that you're in porn yeah i learned the hard way though so yeah. other than that i haven't had any issues with especially when it comes to financial stuff i mean everyone asks me what do you do and i'm just like oh i'm self-employed i'm in film and photography that's what i always say uh, you know what i say i say that well, i shoot influencers because it's actually oh. true because you a lot of the girls place. that I shoot have like millions of followers, which and is true. Because most, yeah, and to most people, that's like such a kind of like vague and boring, you know. And they'll be like, "Oh, like, is it anybody I know?" And I'll be like, "You know, like TikTokers and stuff like that." And most people are like, "Oh, okay, I don't know." They're like, like, "Okay, you got me to." <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like whatever answer I can give them that's like the most boring and the least interesting, yeah. but it's like kind of true is is what I say. Because I mean, you, you probably get by this. I talk a lot, so I've learned when it comes to financial things, you just answer them, say the basic things. When they're like, "Okay, so what do you do for a living?" Oh, film photography. Okay. Did there anything yeah. else? Nope. I just, so just keep it, keep it simple. But yeah, luckily I've not had, I've not had anything with that. Like, which is actually been, been like, I mean, it's, it's been good. It's been, a, it's been a good time. I like, um, especially financially, which is great. Um, but yeah, never had any any issues with with being denied, apart from that one time when I blatantly told them. I mean, I'm sure if I went around saying, "Oh yeah." I'm a porn prop. I call myself a porn prop. People are like, oh yeah, he's a porn star. I'm like, ah, prop. More like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I said, I'm there to make the girls look good. I don't look at myself as a star though. I do not look at myself as a porn star. When people are like, you're a porn star. I'm like, I don't look at myself as a star. I don't know. Yeah, Cause to me, the stars are the women, not me, you know? Mm, that's why I so, really like you so much. But I mean, you know, being not a porn star, you have been nominated for Performer of the Year at XBiz and AVN, yes. as well as Best Leading Actor and Best POV Scene for AVN. So yes. how do you feel about like awards in general? Because I've been seeing a lot of like, you know, kind of back and forth on Twitter. A lot of people feel left out when they don't get nominated for awards. Um, um, does it Like how significant is that to you? I used to feel a little bit left out, I guess. And I think that's all it is, is a bit left out. I don't, I've never really been in a person that's like, oh, it's going to change my life if I win. Because I, I know these awards, it's like anything. A lot of it's politics too, you know what I mean? A lot of it's this and that. And there's a lot of, I don't know the underlying story, but there's, there's politics and everything, you know what I mean? It is nice to get nominated, like, um, but I don't hold my breath with winning, you know? Um, especially with this pandemic. I mean, I know before you used to have to like put in all your scenes to to get them to look through and then maybe get nominated. I mean, I, I didn't put myself forward or anything this year. I completely forgot about it. I'm like, oh, we're going digital? Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, we're yeah. going digital? Okay, cool. Uh, so to be nominated, yeah, it, it is very nice, uh, especially before the year. I was like, oh, wow. Okay, I, I have no stigma on the thing I'm going to win. You know what I mean? If I win, I'll be I'll generally surprised, you know? Um mm -hmm. So, but I mean, it is nice to have, to have the recognition and be there with some of the great people that have been nominated in the category. Um, yeah. But I said, I don't hold my breath. And like, if I wasn't nominated, would I be a bit disheartened? I'd be like, maybe a little bit, if I'm honest. I'd be like, oh, well, that sucks. You know what I mean? Especially, I'm, I'm really glad that Ayla Donovan got nominated for Best Actress in Toxic because she worked really hard for that one as well. Uh, and she messaged me because she didn't, she didn't see it in the AVN. She was like, oh, congratulations on your nomination for Best, Best Actor for 
toxic. And I was like, you got nominated too. She was like, wait, what? I didn't see. So, uh, which is great. So I, 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 if she won, that would be a great, it would be great if she won that. Um, she deserves yeah. it, you know, um, which was a great movie, actually, Toxic by Jackie St. James. We had, a, we, had a great, we had a great time doing that feature. Um, I've seen the, the cover. It looks beautiful. No, it's great. And it sucks because I love Jackie to death, and I don't think she gets enough recognition with the work that she does at all, yeah, especially yeah, when it comes to that the... woman works so oh, yeah. hard and so often. Especially I was actually, talking... I, think about, I think about her a lot because I've yeah. cut down on my shooting so much since I had a kid. Yeah. I only shoot four scenes max a month. Yeah. I shoot two scenes for twisties. They're treated the month. And yeah. I shoot like one showcase for browsers and then one from my website. And I'm yeah. honestly like so happy to be shooting so little. Yeah. Um, and I just like look at how much Jackie works and, and she writes her movies and she does features with all this dialogue. And I'm just like, wow, I couldn't do that anymore. And she's the same age as me. I know. And I know she's, I know she's wanting to slow down um, and kind of like head up the productions. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. Which I hope she does. Like she, she deserves it. And it just sucks because a lot of these people that win Best Actor and Actresses are, on, are the features that have far bigger budgets. Yeah, it's you know it's, I mean? it's kind of unfair. Like the huge gap between the budgets of the movies, you know, that people work really hard yeah. on, and the budgets of you know, I mean, let's be honest. Like the Vixen movies, like oh yeah, they have the Vixen, like, Axel Braun, the, no the the budget. The, the, and yeah. you know they do fucking incredible beautiful yeah. stuff and like they you know caden like they all deserve no, to be nominated absolutely, because absolutely. They do is phenomenal but it's also like you know how do you compete against somebody who had so much more money yeah. to make a movie no, exactly. than you did it's like it's gonna be the same we, thing like put it quasar so and i have talked about like could we do like movies that were like made for under like thirty thousand? But, but, but that's like, like 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 they have in when they do actors they have indie <clears throat> movies, which is indie movies is, mm -hmm. is going to be a smaller budget because right. you can't a, a movie could be great, but it's not going to be put in the same category as okay this movie was uh we shot this for half a million okay this movie was fifty million to shoot it's not going to it's not going to be in the same category you know yeah and when yeah, it comes yeah. to Hollywood so I I've thought about that too that I think it should be a uh, best not small budget but best. There's got to be a category where you have it as like, I mean, at the end of the day, if you have a great feature that's not cost a lot of money, I mean, that's great, you know. I think there should be a category for that, which, which, I mean, Jackie spoke spoke about it, and she we've even said it's because the budgets aren't high enough, you know what I mean? Um, but we, you don't need it for for those companies. I mean, Mile High and and um, Valesa aren't going to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on a scene, you know, on on a feature, really, you know. Yeah. But Vixen, Axel Braun, and all the people they uh, say, um, what is it? Um, uh what's it what's the other big one um the Bree mills does what's that company oh gamma like gamma. Adult time. so they adult time yeah. so they have big budgets um mm -hmm. so i get it so i get it from that standpoint that yeah those are the people that are going to win because i mean it's it's kind of like it is what it is you know and they are they they I mean it, you can see the end result as well how different it is with those bigger budgets so so i get it but i just think jackie yeah. st james should get recognized for her work because I, everyone loves her you know what i mean and she works so hard and she's got such a good yeah. reputation so i don't know yeah. I, I i love jackie I love, I love jackie i love working with her a lot yeah she's I, she's uh, fantastic i don't i even i even told her who doesn't like her yeah i even told her i said if i could exclusively work for you i would and i don't really want to exclusively work for anyone but i would for yeah. valesta and jackie i would um yeah. oh well we never know we'll see you never know well yeah. shout out to jackie <coughs> shout out you. to jackie we love you <laughs> we love um, you Quentin, yes thank you so much for your time it's been so lovely to chat to you thank you for taking time out on your holiday to talk to me mm -hmm. i really appreciate it absolutely um, it's been a pleasure can you tell everybody where they can find you social media websites you want to plug anything like that all right, well, you can find me on Twitter at Quinton James XXX. I think I'm shadow bound, so you might have to like actually find me, find me. Um, you can also find me on Instagram at the Quinton James Life. There is a fake profile out there. So just remember the Quinton James Life is mine. Um, and then also my OnlyFans is uh, OnlyFans forward slash Quinton James. And then pretty much anything else, like I need to post all my stuff on Mini Vizimo, but anything that's forward slash Quentin James is my, I normally keep it very thing. But forward slash Quentin James, my only fans, and then Quentin James Life for Instagram and Quentin James XXX for Twitter. Mm. 
Yes. And you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. And if you want to, of course, support this podcast, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall unfiltered and get access to all kinds of cool perks, including merch, early release, live recordings, and special bonus content. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will see you next week. 